Hello, good morning. Welcome to all, you all to the eighth open air area workshop on legal issues in open research data. Uh, I give the floor to uh, Pedro Principe. Okay, uh, good morning. Um, so, welcome you. It's uh, really a pleasure to welcome you in this um, open air workshop uh, on legal issues in open research data. Um, when, we, when we have decided to propose this uh, workshop to the RDA plenary meeting, we thought to do it uh, here, uh, not to do it in the, in the hotel, to do it close to the open air stakeholders, to have researchers, to have research managers, librarians, uh, repository managers. So it's why we are here at the University of um, Barcelona in this beautiful building. Uh, first of all, I, I, I need to thank to the, to the university, and to the vice rector to supporting this um, workshop and also to Ignasi and to the team of Ignasi to support the, all the um, organization of this workshop. Um, I'm, I'm from the University of Minho that is in open air, the regional coordinator for the South region. Um, in the South region we have, um, so different countries and of course we have Spain. The National Open Access Desk uh, in open air for Spain is FECIT, so FECIT um, is also supporting this initiative. So Eva, my colleague Eva is also here, so if you want to contact Eva, uh, that is uh, at this moment is outside at the registration, so you can also contact FECIT and Eva is the National Open Access Desk. So you can you can contact them if you if you need support. Um, so we will have three sessions this morning, uh, and the, at the afternoon in the afternoon we will have breakout sessions. So I invite you to stay uh, until the the breakout sessions in the afternoon. I, I know that some of you need to go to other events in the afternoon, but uh, we will have the three sessions. But in the afternoon we also have uh, the breakout sessions, which I think is will be very useful for us um, to discuss. We have some materials uh, over there uh, at the entrance, um, uh, some fact sheets that are also in your folder. So we have a specific fact sheet for personal data and the open research data pilot. And we have also uh, over there the, um, the summary of the legal study that uh, my colleagues um, from the University of Gottingen will uh, present. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's, it's all from, from, from me. And thank you for being here with us today. Thank you very much, Pedro. Now I give the word to Anthony Roschelow. So. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, thank you, Ariel. Um, and welcome, everybody, to this uh, open air workshop. Um, uh, very thank thanks for the invitation as well. Um, so, my name is Tony Ross Hellauer. I am scientific manager for uh, the open air initiative. I work at the University of Göttingen. I work at the University of Göttingen. Um, and at Göttingen, we are responsible for the overall coordination of the networking side of open air, for, for the network of people, and I'll explain uh, as we go. So, what is open air? Open air exists to foster the social and technical links that enable open science in Europe and beyond. And we are a socio-technical network. So, we um, have people in place, and we have technologies. And the, and the, the, uh, uh, the network helps inform the development of the technology and the, and the technology underpins uh, the outreach that's done by our network of national open access desks. We have um, a, a dual core. We want to link open science. And this means putting policies and practices together to make uh, sure that open access, open access to publications, but also to research data, to software, to other research outputs, to the whole research life cycle. 
to make sure that the open access, uh, the paradigm shift that we're seeing is a sustainable one based on open infrastructures. And we, our, our mission is to put the research within its proper context, so uh, to provide intelligent discovery uh, uh, by linking these research outputs so that people can find them. Uh, the, aim of open, the ultimate aim of open science is about increasing transparency and trust in science, uh, but, and also about enabling the reproducibility and the reusability reproducibility of results and the reusability of products. And also about opening up um, the means of monitoring and analyzing uh, science um, so that these aren't based on uh, only proprietary tools as well. So who are we in Open Air? We're, we're a big consortium. We have 50 partners from in every EU country and beyond. Uh, we are uh, open access experts uh, within libraries and data centers. We are information and computer science experts uh, building e-infrastructure technologies. Uh, we are also experts on specific uh, topics, including uh, legal topics, which we'll uh, hear about today from my colleagues at the University of Göttingen. And we are data communities. We've been in 24-7 operation now since 2010. We've um, had four project phases to date, and we will be forming a legal entity in 2017. So uh, open, here, open Air is here to enable open science in Europe and, and beyond for the long term. As I said, we have this dual core. Um, on the one side, we have our, our network of people and it's a, it's, um, this is really the, the crown jewel of open air um, as I see it. So we have a network all over Europe of 33 expert nodes, the national open access desks. They're in uh, every EU country and more. And they're there to help local researchers, research administrators, project coordinators with training and support on open access and open science to help develop policies within their countries, develop and align the policies. And they're also there to help with technical assistance. We, um, we don't just focus within Europe. We also then, because uh, research is global, it's not um, just confined to this continent. So we develop worldwide synergies with um, uh, uh, many uh, of our partners um, or um, comparable um, initiatives on, in other regions. So this is our human infrastructure. And on the other side, we have our technical infrastructure, which is about providing smart services for a range of stakeholders. So we provide uh, services to researchers and research communities to link their research products, for example. We provide services for data providers so that they can um, uh, easily make their data um, openly available so that uh, we can uh, uh, link, make those links. We provide services to funders and research administrators and also to third-party service providers. All our information, our, um, our whole information graph is available through APIs and linked open data so anybody in the private sector or in academia can build on it. So um, today I, I thought uh, this was a very quick introduction to what Open Air is. Um, and in the um, few minutes I have left, I would just thought that I would um, uh, try to give you an, an overview of our activities in research data management. So we're about open science, and obviously open data is now a very big part of open science. So um, I'm sure you all know, but the, um, the open research data pilot from the European <coughs> Commission, it began in 2015, uh, limited to some program areas. It was very successful and it has been extended to cover all program areas for all new calls from 2017 onwards. So that means from uh, all calls beginning this, uh, the start of this year will be open data by default. And the EC's mantra is uh, that the data should be as open as possible and as closed as needed. So there are very robust opt-out options uh, for uh, concerns about intellectual property, uh, confidentiality, privacy, and so on. 
and we'll talk um, today uh, about, uh, in, um, about some of these issues. Under the pilot, projects must uh, develop and keep up to date a data management plan, deposit data in a data repository, uh, ensure that other people can find it, access it, um, and make sure what tools are needed uh, to use this raw data. And these, I, I, I make clear these four um, stipulations because it's really about putting in place the people and the technologies to make sure that researchers know what they have to do, what this means for them, and to make those processes easier for them as well. So this is our technical infrastructure. Um, and here on the, on the left, you'll see um, a range of data providers, including data repositories. We, harvest, we publish guidelines for these data providers so that they can uh, make their information publicly available and we can find it and uh, aggregate it. We ingest all this information, uh, do a lot of clever technical things to validate it, clean it, deduplicate it and so on. And then we link those products to each other so that um, if you have a publication, for example, then from the publication you can link to the research funding. You can see uh, who funded it. You can see which institutions uh, were involved. You can see which data sets underpin the publications. Uh, and, uh, and so on. And this is really at the core of open science, because if open science is about openness and transparency, and it's about making those uh, research uh, products public, then really it's about the interlinking and the interoperability of those research products that makes the open science, because this is uh, how you make things findable and accessible, and this is really our mission on the technical side. And then um, we make these, this information available uh, to funders and others to measure impact, evaluate, um, uh, to do evaluation, and, to, and they can um, look at research trends as well. So and these are some numbers about uh, what uh, the numbers of publications in our graph. We also have Zenodo, um, uh, our, uh, open, uh, our open repository for all research products hosted by CERN. Uh, Zenodo, you can upload easily up to 50 gigabytes of data or anything else um, and link it directly to your research funding. Uh, we're also looking at new horizons for open data. So um, Paolo, our technical director who, who walked in earlier, is uh, co-chair of the Scolix Initiative along with Elsevier Datasite and others. And they're working to enable the exchange of scholarly links across domains and platforms. Uh, so to put in place um, the, the way to make these links interoperable. Uh, we're also developing, and we'll hear some more about this today in one of the breakout sessions, developing a tool called Amnesia for the effective anonymization of sensitive data. So, and this is again about making the researchers' lives easier. Um, and we have a new project uh, which started at the um, beginning of this year, Open Air Connect. And this envisions providing open science as a service, so providing dashboard tools for repository managers uh, and for research communities to make sure that they can link their research products easily and effectively. Uh, on the human side, we do training and support. So we have a range of um, uh, dissemination materials, some of which uh, you'll find here today, and more you can find on our portal. Uh, we also run many webinars. Our um, webinars on research data management and on writing DMPs have been uh, very, very successful and we'll be running uh, many more of those. So you can find information about the data pilot, about creating data management plans, selecting data repositories and so on. And then uh, uh, finally, we also um, advise on open data. So. Uh, we, our national open access desks, as well as providing the, the first point of contact for researchers, research administrators and others who want to know about open data, they're also um, working and will, and this will become more of a, a theme as we go into the future, to align and develop effective open data and open science uh, policies across, the, um, across Europe. We provide feedback to the European Commission on their open data policies. So last year, for example, we um, 
uh, with uh, a, a, an, another EU initiative, EU DAT. Uh, we provided feedback um, on revising the template for the uh, data management plan in Horizon 2020. Uh, and we have been conducting legal research into research data management and open data. So in uh, 2013, we published a study which came out of um, a previous project phase, Open Air Plus, called Safe to be Open, uh, on research data protection. Some of the authors are here. And those same authors um, have written a study, which will be coming soon, and um, uh, which we have the summary of here. Uh, and those uh, authors will be presenting next. So this was a very quick overview of what open air is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tony, for sharing your insights and your hard work on open air. So, well, this is the eighth workshop devoted to explore legal hindrances and potential solutions to open research data. If you check today's program, as Pedro has shown you, has shown you, uh, you have a full day ahead, involving many things like personal data protection, data interoperability, open research, data pilots in Horizon 2020, infrastructures, then well, a lot of things. So I hope you have a very nice workshop. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizing committee for bringing this nice workshop to our home, to the University of Barcelona. We are always um, have uh, open, um, receive this kind of workshops with open arms. And also, I would like also to especially uh, thank those of you coming from abroad and also people uh, here. Finally, I would like, I, I always like to, ch to share some some opinions on on this uh, on this stuff. And casually, last week I was in, uh, at, at an event at London, and in that event I wasn't expected. It wasn't expected. I found uh, a guy from the Trust Initiative from MIT, who they are also working on trying to think in new ways of sharing or making use of data. In this case, it was a guy uh, from Project Opal. And which actually is completely the opposite of sharing data. It's, uh, it's sharing code and putting the code into some arbiters of the data so that uh, data is never shared, but they're shared are the outcomes of the data. And these arbiters are third parties third, um, with, with trust grantees. So I thought it was interesting, so I wanted to share that with you because it's a, a different way of, instead of uh, giving, opening the data, is opening the code so that actually you can put that into, into whatever uh, data without uh, problems of privacy, in, in, always in, in the good uh, idea that uh, this trust is, has actually uh, well, uh, well, good um, privacy protection uh, policies. And also, uh, another thing that was quite interesting for me are the ways of, uh, similar to the Amnesia project, uh, Tony was, was talking to you about new uh, approximations to um, anonymizing data or, or making data obscure for, uh, in, in order to protect privacy, uh, and in particular, those lines, I think that they are interesting to have a look at, are those that are concerned with uh, machine learning techniques coming from the deep learning world, which actually are able to uh, give uh, pure, secure data, but only for a specific task. So uh, from the Office of Digital Transformation that I represent, we give full support to, st to studying uh, new ways in favor of open science, open data, and open access. So in closing, uh, I hope you all enjoyed this workshop as well to our city, and I would like you to welcome you all to the Universitat de Barcelona. So thank you very much for being here. <laughs>